The 2020 South Carolina football season was a season to forget, no question about it. This is a season that Gamecock fans want to put in their back pocket, completely forget about because it was one of the most disappointing seasons that we've had as a Gamecock fan in a long time. Like even today, you look at 2015, even everything that happened that, that year, this year was just so much worse than what had happened la- that year. Even though that we did lose to the Citadel in that game, you look at the games after Spurrier left and the one I really want to point to in this case is the Clemson one, where even though Spurrier had left and everything, we were able to make that Clemson game very, very close. And after Muschamp left and everything, the Missouri game, actually, I don't blame this at all on the team. Like, I think that the team, for what we had out there, I think the guys that we had out there were going out there and putting in 110% every single play. I honestly like to see that, like to see the guys who are going to be the future of Gamecock football get the reps in and everything, and the guys who are going to put their whole heart into this program going out there and playing. We just got out-talented, and that was it. It was just straight on from that point, even before that. Like, the Texas A&M one, that might have been one of the, that was probably definitely top three Gamecock, worst Gamecock games I've ever watched in my life. The LSU one was terrible. Uh, What else was bad? Mississippi, Ole Miss, that was a good offensive performance, but the defensive performance on that side of the ball was just terrible. Flashback to that one Elijah Moore play where they're literally inside their 10 or something like that. And you have the best wide receiver stat-wise in the SEC, leading in receiving yards, streaking down the field wide open. No one's even near him. No one's even within a 20-mile radius of him. Like, that's how wide open he was running down the field and he goes even Lane Kiffin knew it he threw his clipboard up 20 yards in the air it was it was just a very bad defensive showing for us that game uh, UGA and Kentucky obviously those were bad games but again what we had with injury and opt-outs and what we were putting out on the field the product that we were putting out on the field compared to the teams that we were playing against I completely understand why it happened but some of the games this season were just just terrible just terrible to watch like my shirt says it all i just got in one of my new merch shirts uh this is these shirts are actually amazing by the way like this is the first time i'm getting my own merch but these are really really nice if i look upset it's because carolina lost all saturday i wish i had that earlier on in the season because obviously i could have wore that in a lot of post games mainly every single game from the auburn game i could have wore this um, but if you want yours, go check out the store link in the description. I'll drop a comment too, with the link down below, get yours. I got Beamer shirts out now and I got Willie B shirts. So lots of Gamecock stuff for you Gamecock fans there. Shirts are only 15 bucks. Great deal. Great quality. Great. Everything. Go check them out now getting into this season. I just want to go through each game. There is a small possibility that the Gamecocks might have another game this season. I know it's crazy to think about a bowl game may be in the near future for the Gamecocks, but I think it's unlikely, even if we do get in a bowl game, I think that everything that's gone on with the head coaching, uh, changing everything, switching to Shane Beamer, and everything that's going on in the program, I think it's in our best interest to not play that bowl game. I think it's not going to happen, even if we get accepted. I think that the team will ultimately decline. Like Obviously, I'd love to watch another Gamecocks game, even though, even though we probably get smacked I'd love to watch. I love watching Gamecock fans. And I'm going to watch them no matter what. And it gives me more to talk to you guys about. So I'd love another bowl game. But honestly, I don't think I do not think it's going to happen. So let's recap this 2020 season. Let's go into the time travel box and flash back to September 26th, 2020, Saturday, a night game in williams Bryce. Everything looks bright. It looks like on the first drive, first drive of the game, the Gamecocks get the ball. And we have an amazing drive put together by Mike Bobo and our new quarterback, Colin Hill. Everything looks up for the Gamecock football. Because I remember texting my friends and everything. I was like, Mike Bobo has arrived in Columbia, boys. Like, this season is going to be fun. We go out of the first drive of the game. Obviously, it was amazing. But then from that point on in the game, the offense in that first half got shut down like completely like there's no offensive production in that uh, first half after that first drive we let up a pick six blah 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 our defense did have some good stands in in the first half in that game second half our offense finally started to get rolling but that's when the defense started to let up and that's when Tennessee started to score more points but it all came down to the one play we're at the end of the game 
the Gamecocks defense makes a crucial stop to stop Tennessee and get the ball back into our hands with about, I don't know, maybe 130, something like that left in the game. And Colin Hill has a chance in his first game ever as a Gamecock to march down the field and go win the game for them. He has a game-winning drive in his hands. But on the punt, Jamie Robinson is back to receive it. He calls uh, for it, hits the ground or whatever. He yells for all the receivers or the upmen to get away or whatever, all the guys on the Gamecocks, get away from the ball, get away from the ball. And Cam Smith touches the ball, and, of course, Tennessee picks it up. And the Gamecocks start the season 0-1. Next week, we go down to Gainesville, uh, October 3rd, Saturday, October 3rd. Very good game. I thought that that was definitely a pretty good game for the talent of the team that we played. Our offense played really well in that game. Like, we went out in the first quarter. I remember scoring on the opening drive. We had a very, very good start to that game. But then I think just after that, it was talent-wise that all came down to Florida. Florida just out-talented us. We know that the offense that they have on that team is absolutely lethal. And that's really what killed us in this game. We could have made it a seven-point game. Like, we had... Colin Hill had a wide open pass in the end zone at the end of that game. Then we would have gone for the onside kick with like less than a minute left. It was unlikely, but there still was a chance. But Colin Hill was not able to make that wide open pass. I can't remember who that was to, but that was a rough play to watch. 0-2 on the season. Next week, we go down to Nashville, Tennessee. By the way, the uh, final score of that game was 38-24. to Tennessee was 31-27. to Next week, we go down to Nashville, Tennessee. And that was a game that you expected to win. That was a really good offensive performance even though in the first quarter and everything Tennessee had the chance to win that game like to be leading in that game no question about it they just were terrible in the red zone they were terrible on offense and our team wasn't even that good in the first quarter either but after that after the first quarter our offense got rolling Kevin Harris had some amazing runs the rest of our team just blew them out it was a complete out talented game we beat them and we beat them good we won 41 to 7 in that game and that was a game that you expected to happen so it wasn't really like Oh my gosh, the Gamecocks are so good now. Let's get back on. Let's get all excited for this next game against Auburn. But it was good to see the Gamecocks win a football game again in that game. No question about it. So that was a really good game to watch. Just seeing the Gamecocks go out and win the game. Next week, the Gamecocks have a date with home team, uh, at home at williams Bryce, A noon game. One of the only noon games that we had this season. We The amount of night games were terrible. I hated it because the Gamecocks suck at the night games. We went, we didn't win one single night game this year. We won two noon o'clock games, and we lost uh, one noon game to Florida. The rest were all night games, and we lost every single one of them. So going on to this Auburn game, the Auburn Tigers come to Willie B. A noon, I'm pretty sure that was October 17th, the last game that the Gamecocks won. An amazing game played defensively. You had J.C. Horn come out and have his best game of his career, getting two picks, forcing another pick that was tipped and then caught by Jalen Dickerson. He had some really good plays on Seth Williams in the end zone. I remember that. Seth Williams is one of the better wide receivers in the SEC, so he was matched up against a really good player. Like Seth Williams is one of my favorite players in the SEC, outside of Gamecock players, because Gamecock players are always going to be my favorite Seth Williams is a guy that I really love to watch play. Like, he's a fun, exciting guy to watch play. And J.C. Horn just went up and locked him down. The defense was really good in that game. Offense, we had a lot of help from the defense putting us in good field position, but we still played good. Shai Smith had some of the best catches of the whole season. Obviously, he had the one where he climbed the ladder in the end zone uh, against the Auburn players. And then he later posted and was like, tag the uh, Auburn defenders or whatever is hilarious and then there was another one that Chai had where he caught it on the uh, sideline kind of juggled the ball or whatever Kevin Harris had a really good game that game it was just a good that was when everything started to look up for the Gamecocks because we had a bunch of college game day picks that day picking the Gamecocks and I was like man oh man the Gamecocks are back I remember texting my friends I was like I love this team I'm so happy that I'm a Gamecocks fan the season's turning around and then the next week the next week against LSU is the turning point for the whole season so LSU comes in I can't remember I'm pretty sure they were favored in this game but like a ton of people pick South Carolina I think that game day had it was either 50 50 or clean sweep that South Carolina would win this game because LSU had been playing terrible up to this point uh well who was it Miles Brennan goes out with injury so they have a freshman quarterback coming in for LSU TJ Finley comes in they had the first drive of the game they go score we had the first next drive. Kevin Harris has a long rushing t- touchdown. And I was like, okay, this is going to be a close game. But ever since that point in that game, 
it was just a complete and utter blowout. Like LSU was running up our defense. Our they were our their offense was running up and down the field like nobody's problem. Like they had nobody stopping them. Izzy did get a pick in that game. Izzy Mukwamu did go up and get a pick in that game. But other than that, I think it was just a really poor, poor, poor performance by the Gamecocks there, especially defensively when you had the defensive specialist head coach and Will Muschamp letting LSU, who has played terrible all season on both sides of the ball, run up the scoreboard and put 52 on you. That was the start of the collapse for the Gamecocks. The next game was the Texas A&M game, the number seven Texas A&M Aggies come to Willie B for another night game. And that game was just, I remember just sitting on the floor in front of my TV, completely emotionless. Like I just sat there and I didn't move. I didn't move my face. I just sat there, my eyes wide open, didn't blink and just stared at the TV screen. Like, that's all I did. I just stared, stared at the TV screen. It was like everything was going over my head. It was like I was dead or something. I'm dead serious. I was just sitting in front of the TV, completely shocked, in complete and utter shock at what I was watching. Like, I didn't think that the Texas A&M game from last year could be top because that was a terrible game, but this one did top it. Like, for how bad that game was, the only bright spot in this game was Ryan Holinsky's drive at the end of the game to go and score three points for the Gamecocks. So we got to see some kind of points in that game. And the fact that we didn't even go for the fourth down there is pretty bizarre because we had no chance of coming back in the game. And then you kick a field goal. Like, it was terrible. Our defense got absolutely run over. Ryan Holinsky had the only scoring drive of that game. And the fact that Colin Hill didn't get pulled out earlier was absolutely terrible. I'd been calling for Colin Hill to get put out for a while at this point I think like half half time at the LSU game I was like it was time for Colin Hill to we got to bring in someone new whether that's Ryan whether that's Luke I just wanted to see something new I was done because we had seen the ceiling which was the Auburn game which wasn't even that good of a game because our defense put us in such good positions with the ball for our offense and the rushing game with Kevin Harris was absolutely carrying at that point I was just like, come on, guys, we gotta, we gotta pull something. But nonetheless, Texas A&M, we score three points all game, and then I was like, okay, so we just got blown out. Everyone, pretty much everyone, was out for must champion fired after that game. Like the LSU game, it was stirring, but then after the Texas A&M game, I think it was in full force that everyone was like, okay, we gotta do something here. Like, come on, we gotta fire him. So that's when the season kind of really took a downwards turn. Like it went from LSU was like down like this this angle, if you could see that. And then Texas A&M was just straight down like that. Like it was, it was terrible. The Ole Miss game, I thought for sure we were getting a new quarterback. I was in complete and utter shock on that Friday that when I heard that we were not switching our quarterback. I can't remember. When was the bye? Was the bye in between? L- yeah, the bye was in between LSU and Texas A&M. And that was just a game, even the Texas A&M game, that was a game that I wasn't excited for at the beginning because I'd had the bye week after the LSU game. So it just felt like there was nothing to be excited for for this Texas A&M game. And I watched it and I got everything that I expected to happen. Like, it was terrible. We go to Ole Miss the next week. Colin Hill is still the starter. Now, this game was a better offensive performance, but yet again, Look at the offensive performance by our running back in that game. Kevin Harris, I'm pretty sure he rushed for 200 plus five touchdowns. Dude's an absolute beast. He won this season uh, MVP, no question about it. He is the bright spot of Carolina football for the next couple of years. Kevin Harris, Marshawn Lloyd, those two guys are going to carry the SEC in rushing yards and everything. I'm telling you, those two are going to be really something special in that South Carolina backfield. Other than Shai Smith had an amazing catch in that game. He had a couple, another one on the sideline, and then obviously he had the one-handed snag in the end zone for a touchdown. Great to see from him. The defense, that defense game, I already touched on it a bit, just how poor that game was defensively. How, yes, Ole Miss has one of the best offenses in all of college football. Matt Corral is putting up amazing numbers. Elijah Moore is putting up crazy numbers. You had Snoop Connor putting up amazing uh, yards rushing. Ely putting up amazing yards rushing. Yaboa is one of the better uh, tight ends in all of college football. Yes, that team is really good. That team is amazing offensively. But to let them score, how many points do they score? 59, almost 60 points they let up. And we just, it was terrible. Like some of the blown coverages in that game were just unbearable to watch and then after that point that's when the full force must champ fire 
whatever you want to call it, became into like a whole mob and protest. Like that's when you really had people going at it and saying, fire him, fire him, fire him. And of course on that Sunday, which many think was the bright spot to the South Carolina season was Will Muschamp being fired. I wanted him fired. I wanted him out. I didn't have anything against him personally, but as a full, I know he's a great guy and everything respectable, uh, great family, all that kind of stuff. I had nothing against him personally, but from a football standpoint, us as a fan base all knew it that this is not the expectation for Gamecock football at that point. The locker room culture was not what we wanted in our program. So at that point, Ray Tanner, Caslin, all the guys uh, up top made one of the best decisions of the season, if not the best decision of the season to let go of Will Muschamp and move on and bring in Mike Bobo to be our intern head coach. Next game against Mizzou. We went into this game knowing that we were really beat up. We had the opt-outs. We had JC, we had Izzy, we had RJ all opt-out. We had tons of injuries. But this game was honestly one of the more impressive games for what we had in this game. I loved watching this game. Like I think it was a very exciting game. It was a game where we brought in Luke Doty, Colin Hill. It it was finally at this game where Colin Hill got put out. He got taken out of the game. We put in Luke Doty. He did pretty good for his first couple games. Obviously, we weren't expecting some Heisman performance, but he had the freshman mistakes. We were all expecting that. He had some pretty bad picks in those three games that he went on after. But he had some really bright spots. We know that he's known for his scrambling in the uh as a quarterback and everything that he can make plays with his feet. He was really fun to watch and just brought a whole new excitement to the ball team. So that was really fun to watch. And our defense in that second half, pitching a shutout in the second half, a defense that was so beat up in that game, went out and played their absolute hearts out. And I give a round of applause to them. I remember that post game. I went into that post game and I was really optimistic about what I just saw. Even though the Gamecocks did lose, even though it was a really bad pick at the end of the game by Luke Doty, It was an amazing game to watch and a really good job done by the coaching staff and the players to just go out there and play their hearts out. I had fun watching that game. The Mizzou game, honestly, there were a lot of takeaways from that game. The UGA game after, this was our rivalry game this year. Team was really beat up. This was going to be Luke Doty's start and a really good Georgia defense stopped us on offense and a JT Daniels led Georgia Bulldogs offense who's just getting rolling this was JT's one of his first starts for Georgia he was starting to get the ball rolling offensively and we saw it the Georgia rushing game was absolutely lethal in this game there's nothing we could do that rushing game whenever that offensive line is on point for Georgia the game's over like Georgia when they're able to just dominate the uh, offensive line the line of scrimmage it's game over and that's what they did in this game. The rushing was just insane. I remember looking at the rushing stats of this game. Let's pull them up cuz I remember they rushed for like 300 plus or something. Like it was a terrible terrible game. Let's pull them up. Box score from the Georgia game. Complete rushing yards, yeah, 332 while the Gamecocks had 83. So that tells you uh, why that game went so poorly for that. Georgia's offensive line is unbelievable. Their rushing game is unbelievable. So that's really why Georgia was able to prevail in this one. UK, the last game of the season, again, injuries, opt-outs. We barely had enough scholarship players to even go out there. I don't even know if we did have enough, but I give kudos to the coaching staff for the players and everything for still wanting to go out there and wanting to play the game. And they went out and they played their hearts out. Yes, the defense, we all knew that it was going to be a pretty shabby um, defensive performance by the Gamecocks in that game. We knew that the offense, we had, Shy was out, or no, he was back in this game. Never mind, he was out for the... um, Georgia game he was back in this game we didn't get the ball in his hands as much as I would have liked to he had a touchdown in this game but it got called back due to a, I'm pretty sure is a holding call after that is the rushing game Kevin Harris I'm, he did have a good game he went 100 plus rushed for the 1000 yard mark that we all love to see Kevin Harris again amazing player loved watching him this season the defense did what the defense was expected to do and just gave up a lot of points the offense was struggling this game no question about it but We expected it to happen. I wasn't really disappointed in this game because we knew what we were going into this game with, but it is what it is. The Gamecocks finished the season 2-8, and and we have one of the worst seasons that I've ever watched as a Gamecock fan. I'm a young kid. I'm only 17. I'm turning 18 soon, but I haven't really... I started watching Gamecock football. When was it? I'm pretty sure the Outback Bowl 2013 was when 
I really started to fall in love with the team. I think I was only 10 years old or something like that. My family had constantly traveled down to uh, South Carolina. We had a timeshare in Hilton Head Island. So I'd been there so often and I've been a huge football fan my whole, uh, like my whole life. If you don't know, I'm from Canada, Toronto, Canada. So we had been traveling to Hilton Head Island, South Carolina for a while. I've been a huge football fan my whole life. I'm a big Chicago Bears fan and Carolina Panthers fan. And I didn't really get into college football until I started traveling down there. And I got all the game. Like, I started to see this team's logo and everything everywhere. I saw the Gamecock stuff. And I was like, you know what? Let's start cheer for this team. So I got some Gamecock stuff. I remember I had a, I got a cocky stuffed animal or something like that that turned into a football. I still have that. Because that was like the first Gamecocks thing I ever got. I had some t-shirts or whatever. First game I ever watched was that 2000 and... 13 Outback Bowl versus the Michigan Wolverines. And from there, my fandom has just taken off. Like, I absolutely love this team. Watch every single game. The first game I ever went to was actually... I apologize for that. It turns out I've been talking for so long that my SD card actually ran out of memory. So I had to restart the video. Going back to what I was talking about, first Gamecocks game I ever went to was ranked... I can't remember who did it. It was either CBS or 24-7 Sports. Ranked the game that I was at, my first Gamecocks game ever, as the worst lost of the decade in two uh of the decade 2010 to 2019 for the Gamecocks and that was the 2013 game in Tennessee I went down to Knoxville it was on our way to South Carolina I went down to Knoxville Tennessee went to go to that game completely blown away by the college football experience like from that it was such an amazing experience for me even though the Gamecocks did lose and it ultimately cost us a trip to Atlanta and maybe a national championship I had an absolute blast but what I'm talking about why I raised this up and whatever since that season, since I started being a Gamecock fan or whatever, this season was definitely one of the hardest to watch, if not the hardest to watch. It's definitely between this one and 2015, which even in that one, I went to our only SEC win that year against Vanderbilt. We beat North Carolina. And who else did we beat that season? There was one other team. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. But that season, basically, well, I think we beat ECU or something like that in 2015. This season, we only won two games. Yes, it was a shortened season. Yes, it was due to COVID, but it was just a really up and down season for us Gamecock fans. Like this season was really, really bad. I just want to go through some of the final stats for the Gamecocks this season because why not? It's a season recap. Let's just check out because obviously we have some impressive ones. Kevin Harris is the one I obviously want to start off with. 1,138 rushing yards in 10 games. That is really, really impressive. Kudos on him. That's 110 about rushing yards per game an amazing job by him Kevin Harris round of applause to him an amazing season by him Colin Hill was our leading passer 1,411 yards Shai Smith I really feel bad for Shai Smith because I feel like this season we really took down his draft stock because his stats and everything aren't as good as they should be for how good of a wide receiver he is he's gonna have the highlight tape like we saw some of his amazing catches this year but we were not able to give him production enough to be able to really increase his draft stock, and he's already declared for the draft. So, Shai Smith, I wish the best for him in the draft. I'm going to be cheering for him wherever he goes. Great to see. I loved watching him. It was a good career for him. Ernest Jones led the team in tackles, 86 tackles. Leader, uh, He was definitely our leader on the defense, no question about it. He was a guy I loved watching. Great leader on defense. He was really the guy who got the defense to make the big plays when we need to. He is the leader on defense, no question about it. Love Ernest Jones. Wish the best for him in the NFL. J.C. Horn, he had been one of my uh, favorite players for the Gamecocks throughout his whole career. Yes, he did opt out early. I don't really have anything against him. It was a business decision. He's got to go do what he's got to do. He led the team with two interceptions, and those both of those interceptions came in that Auburn game. And I'm pretty sure Kinsley and Ikbari led the team in sacks. Yeah, he had six which was leading the SEC at some point. So he was our leading uh, player with sacks. Keir Thomas was after that with three. And then the only other, we had no one else with multi-sacks. That's a huge problem. That's something that the Gamecocks are going to have to work on, getting to the quarterback, because that's something that we've really lacked the last couple years. Other than that, there isn't really any other stats that are worth noting. So thank you for watching this video, guys. As all. It's a rough season for the Gamecocks, but we are the best fan base in the nation. We always stand strong no matter what happens. Shane Beamer is coming to Columbia, South Carolina. Tons to look up for. Next season's going to be a good one, guys. So thank you for watching. Stick around. Come back for next season. Basketball season's coming up. I do lots of basketball content, so definitely stick around for that. Thanks for watching. Go Gamecocks, and definitely come back next time.